Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. We are going to dive into a brand new channel for the first time and I really don't know what to expect. I watched about the first 30 seconds just to get a feel for it, but I want my reaction to be genuine so I didn't watch the video. Uh, the channel is called Decades. They have 8,540 subscribers and it seems like the kind of thing we might be interested in. 25 absurd random history facts. So I'll put a link in the description to the original content so you can check them out and see some of their other stuff. If you like this video, please check out their channel, give them a subscribe, and maybe give them a few more views on some of their other videos. Let's go ahead and dive into this one. This is Earth. Earth is where we live. And it's totally bonkers. And it's hard to imagine all these serious historical events taking place on the same planet where we open Twitter to have vapid, meaningless arguments with people we'll never meet. and share memes with no context whatsoever that shouldn't be funny. However, the world didn't turn daft overnight. In fact, in some cases, it's always been that way. The world didn't turn daft overnight. That's true. And I mean, when you think of all the billions of people who have existed on this planet and all the thousands and th thousands of interactions that each of those people has had with the world, there's bound to be stuff that's so crazy that it's almost impossible to believe that unfolds at some point or another. And so for this new channel we're trying to get up and running, I thought it wouldn't be a bad idea to start off with 25 absurd random history facts, I ranging like from the odd to the outright hilarious. If you enjoy this video, please do leave a like. And remember, it goes a long way in helping us achieve world domination. And without <laughs> nice. further ado, let's begin. Napoleon Bonaparte's most humiliating moment would arguably take place in July of 1807, where the famous conqueror was attacked by a horde of rabbits during a rabbit hunt he had arranged for him and his men. Once released from their cages, the rabbits simply charged at Napoleon and his men, and thus the hunter became the hunted. And what I wouldn't give to witness that. <laughs> That's like straight out of Monty Python, right? I mean, the killer rabbit that bites the guy's head off, and they're like, look at the bones! Oh my gosh. That's insane. I wonder if that had any meaning toward, like, did that inspire Monty Python to write that scene? I'd be curious to know that. Since Napoleon lived until 1821, I think it's fair to say that the rabbits didn't succeed in killing Napoleon. However, the humiliation it likely caused him was good enough. That's crazy. Never heard that story. In France during the year 1386, a pig was arrested, imprisoned, tried in a court, and executed for murdering a child. Though not unique for an animal to be put on trial in the Middle Ages, it is still a silly thought. I've heard of an elephant that was hanged, uh, but I never heard of that one. That Honestly, that does not surprise me all that much, and I wonder if they ate it afterwards is the real question. On the 27th of August 1896, the Anglo-Zanzibar War broke out between Britain and Zanzibar. It ended 38 minutes later, with one British sailor wounded, and on Zanzibar's part, roughly 500 were either wounded or killed, including military and civilian alike. This is considered to be the shortest war in history, and it didn't last as long as half a football match. <laughs> That's cool. At US President Andrew Jackson's funeral in 1845, his pet African grey parrot had to be removed because it was swearing loudly and often disturbing other attendees. And here we mourn the loss of the President of the United- Chuck! <laughs> Absolutely 100% true, and I'm actually working on, right now, my own video where I give w one random favorite fact about each president and that's probably going to be my fact for Andrew Jackson is that parrot because it's such a cool story and have you ever been at a at a funeral where something like embarrassing like that happens right I just did my grandparents funeral and we were doing the committal service at the cemetery and somebody's phone went off super loud when I was in the middle of doing the prayer uh, I, I never did find out whose phone it was because I had my eyes closed at the time but uh I can imagine something like that where you're all, it's a solemn moment and everybody's like, you know, talking about the late president and that thing starts ripping out swear words. It had to have been funny to some of the people there and I think Jackson probably would have approved. 
Following the death of Israel's first president in November of 1952, the presidency was offered to Albert Einstein, who declined true. citing he didn't have the natural aptitude to properly deal with people. Albert Einstein wasn't even from his- I feel ya. I feel ya, Albert, 100%. Not, I don't have the aptitude to properly deal with people. Yeah, actually, you gotta remember, Israel is a brand new country that has been formed in the previous decade, right? And, and people are coming, this diaspora of Jews that live all over the world, many of them are coming there to settle. Uh, and so you have people coming from all over. And so from among those people, those Jews who are like Einstein's case, he's a German Jew, um, you're looking for the best and brightest to try and lead these people. And Einstein was just one of many choices that they had. Israel, but declined the presidency on the basis of being an introvert. I feel you. Feel you, Albert. Rome's infamous tyrant Caligula, Caligula. once threatened to make one of his favorite horses a senator, yep. citing it would do a better job than human senators. He was assassinated before he could do this, and rumor has it he had every intent in doing so. Unfortunately, in the end, he didn't really get the chance to. There were a number of really just not good rulers in Rome at that time. Caligula is just one of them. And I often wonder about that story with the horse was he legit just going insane or was it more and i think there's plenty of evidence that caligula probably did have some insane tendencies or some serious mental health issues there but i wonder how much of that was just him trying to make a point and taking it too far by saying listen my horse could do a better job in the senate than you people and then actually following through with it In the year 1820, the town of Salem, Massachusetts, notorious for its witch trials, held a trial to determine whether or not tomatoes were poisonous. The trial was settled when Colonel Robert Given Johnson ate a whole basket of tomatoes without dying or falling ill. I feel like that's the end of the trial, right? If your trial is over whether these are poisonous or not and dude eats a whole batch of them and isn't, it's easy for us to judge that kind of stuff back in 1820, but listen, they didn't know much of what we know now, and it's a world, especially a town that has fallen deep to superstition in the previous years, right? 1692, they had the whole Salem witch trials. It's like the prime example of what mass hysteria can do. Uh, Clearly, they were a superstitious bunch, though a trial against tomatoes in the 19th century is definitely far better than what they were doing at the end of the 17th century. The fear True. of the tomato, which sounds ridiculous to say, wasn't however confined to Salem. I just think it's ironic that it was a town notorious for its witch trials. And there were also in New England, around that time, vampire scares and that might be something we have to take a look into sometime a, a little deeper dive into some of the vampire scares that took place in new england during america's early history that put this superstition to bed king henry the eighth had a grooms of the stool and their job was to wipe his backside after a bowel movement all four individuals who served in this position under henry's reign were knighted so he literally knighted four blokes for wiping his backside. And I also think it's funny that by mathematics, they stuck around longer than his wives did. So you have to understand that people who had those kinds of roles were generally nobility anyway, right? So I get what he's saying and it's cool to present it that way, but these are people that they may have been knighted for who they were and not just because they were the guys that wiped his butt. Uh, you didn't get a role like that. I mean, that was considered a prestigious thing. We didn't look at something like that back then the way it would be looked at today. You, today, you would think if you're the guy that wipes the king's butt, that's like low man on the totem pole. That was a prestigious thing at that time. Uh, and anybody who had those roles where they could serve the king's drinks or food or just have any kind of close, regular proximity to the king, that was a prestigious honor. In the 13th century, Pope Gregory IX declared cats to be associated with devil worship and had as many exterminated as possible. He was not wrong! 100% right. I think we should bring that back. Many believe this led to the increased transmission for the bubonic plague due to the increase in rat infestations. Hmm. However, of late, it's been acknowledged that the plague spread simply far too quickly for rats to be the only culprit. Dick moved from Gregory banning cats, though, because cats are cool. 
Now, uh, another cool fact with the popes, there was once actually a woman pope. They didn't know she was a woman at the time. And uh, at least for a while, they, as part of the process of confirming a pope, they had a thing where you sat on a chair and somebody reached their hand underneath to make sure you had, you had man parts. So... In ancient Asia and up until the 19th century, a popular method of execution was death by elephant. Elephants could be taught to inflict painful and horrific slow deaths or simply execute people using large blades fitted to their tusks. I'm sure it made sense culturally, it just seems a bit random to me. The Asians, man, they know how to come up with crazy, I mean, not just the Asians, I mean, lots of different cultures throughout the world have come up with some really creative and horrible ways to kill people. The Europeans were good at it too. Asians had death by a thousand cuts. Death by elephant seems to be one of the more interesting ones though. The Volkswagen Beetle was commissioned by none other than Adolf Hitler, yep. intended to be a practical and affordable car that the working class could afford. You know, Volkswagen is people's car, right? I mean, that's literally what the word is. The year 46 BCE was 445 days long by imperial decree due to Julius Caesar implementing two extra leap months to bring the calendar in step with the seasons. The basis of the calendar afterwards was the 365 day and 6 hour format that we know today. It's amazing to me that 2000 years ago they were that close on exactly how long a year was that we knew that it's roughly 365 and a quarter days, right? Which is why we have uh, a leap year every four years, but then three times every 400 years, we don't have the leap year. So like in 1600, 1700, and, or no, 1700, 1800, and 1900, we didn't have a leap year but in 2000 we did. And it's just this really complicated way of having to do things based on how exactly long a year is. Cuban dictator Fidel Castro was targeted in over 600 plots to kill him. And the methods of some of these attempted assassinations were equally as hitman level absurd as the number of attempts on his life. From a poisoned diving suit to an exploding cigar, Castro of course survived and lived until 2016 where he passed away aged 90 years. During Prohibition, the US government began to poison alcohol. When the law banning booze was passed, many continued to drink alcohol and thus the law officials were frustrated and naturally responded by poisoning industrial alcohols otherwise regularly stolen by bootleggers and converted into drinking alcohol and those who would consume the poisoned beverages would die. Really kind of nasty stuff by the government, right? I mean, I, I, I'm curious to know what the legal basis was for them being able to get away with stuff like that. This roughly resulted in the deaths of at least 10,000 people by the end of Prohibition in 1933. It's a bit extreme, to be honest. A little bit. Tutomu Yamaguchi was a 29-year-old naval engineer on a business trip to Hiroshima on the 6th of August, 1945, the guy that was surviving in the atomic bomb's blast despite being only two miles away from Ground Zero. On the 7th, he boarded a train home to Nagasaki, where two days later, the other atomic bomb fell on the city. He survived again. Could you even begin to imagine what that would be like to have lived through both of those? Just crazy. Rumor has it he was discussing what he'd seen in Hiroshima with his colleagues when the second bomb fell, interrupting the conversation. Regardless, it's hard to tell if he was a lucky man or an unlucky one, though he lived a long life and only passed away aged 93 in 2010. So good for him that he lived that long, because you know one of the things that we forget is that the impact of those atomic bombs did not end with the putting out of the fires and the end of the explosions. Uh, there was a lot of uh, death afterwards from radiation, from sickness that came later, from cancer even decades later. Uh, it killed people for a long, long time. So for that guy to have been through both of them and to have lived all the way to 2010 is amazing. Carbon dated to between 1404 and 1438, 
The von Eich manuscript still baffles scientists and historians alike. Written in an unidentified language, it's unclear if this was intended as a code or plain gibberish deliberately to fuck with historians. If that is the case, the effort is through the roof, being 240 pages long, with peculiar foldouts and some pages suspected to be missing on top. Many illustrations of plants and animals in the book also cannot really be identified. I think the guy was probably just on some really fun hallucinogenic type stuff, and he thought, you know what would be really, really cool? I'm just going to write stuff down. I have no idea what it says. And for centuries, people are going to be like, what was this guy talking about? That's what he's probably thinking. And I'm sure you'll find no shortage of theories about its purpose. If you want a mad tilt perspective, less time has passed between Cleopatra's reign of ancient Egypt and the invention of the smartphone than between her reign yep. and the pyramids themselves being built. True. And, and one of my all-time favorites, and I'll probably share this one on my history thing too, Joe Biden's birth, November 20th, is it 1942, I think? Uh, Joe Biden was born closer to Abraham Lincoln's second inauguration than he was to his own inauguration. American President Lyndon B. Johnson would continue his interview whilst on the toilet. He'd have reporters and aides follow him into the bathroom in order to continue his meeting or interview whilst yep. exposing his presidential genitals to take care of some plumbing. I'm sure that was an awkward experience for everybody but him. So imagine if that happened today and that leaked into the press that that happened. Could you imagine the firestorm that that would cause? Imagine if Donald Trump had done something like that. Imagine if Barack Obama did something like that. The other side would be calling for impeachment hearings and want to just bring that guy down completely. And everybody hears it about Johnson. We're like, oh, that was funny. In 1985, oceanography professor Robert Ballard embarked on a mission to search for the RMS Titanic. This is the event that got me into history. I was eight years old. I will never forget when they found the Titanic, and it began my lifelong obsession with history. I'm curious to know from you guys, what was the discovery, the, the event, the person that got you into history in the first place? which sank in 1912. That was the public story, however it was actually a front for searching for nuclear submarines lost in the 1960s as part of a secret mission. However, due to finding said submarines earlier than expected, Ballard's team did actually search for and find the wreckage of the RMS Titanic on the 1st of September. And you have to remember that up until the time that he found Titanic, most people believed that the whole story about Titanic breaking in half as it sank was just bad eyewitness testimony and that it probably didn't really happen. It was only when they found it that they confirmed that had actually happened. So much of what we know today about Titanic's final moments, we only learned after we found it. When forks were introduced to Italy in the 11th century, religious leaders referred to them as blasphemous, as eating with artificial hands offended the Lord. And if that's all it takes to offend God, I wonder what he thinks of Twitter. There's a <laughs> hundred percent accurate. If forks offend God, what does he think of Twitter? Wow. Twitter is just, it's a, it's a place. It's a place. There's no evidence to suggest the church as a whole banned the usage of forks. However, individual Roman Catholic leaders on occasion expressed a dislike for it. And what a ridiculous thing to get het up about. I have another fun Hitler fact for you. According to medical records, Adolf Hitler took up to roughly 30 different drugs regularly yep. at one point or another to contain his incessant and uncontrollable farting problem. I'd insert a gas joke here, but it'd be inappropriate. I wonder who leaked that information, because you'd have to feel like that's the kind of thing that only probably came out long after he was known to be dead. Between the years 1898 and 1910, heroin was distributed as a cough medicine. Side effects include scratching for more, I suppose. <laughs> and we've actually seen 
like bottles, like images. I think I did it in one of my photo videos that I did, like showing old photos and stuff, where it was like some kind of medicine and had like four or five different things that are severely either banned or restricted today that were just in over-the-counter cough medicine. During the 1930s, Australia technically went to war with emus. On one occasion, the Australian army found 1,000 emus grouped together and attempted to kill them. The emus won the war in the end. Yep. The unsuccessful attempt to curb the population of emus in Australia has been remembered as the Great Emu War. And I'll throw up here in just a minute when we're done with these, up at the end, I'll throw up a, a, a link to the video, the oversimplified video that I reacted to about the Great Emu War. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff. In 1866, Liechtenstein sent out an army of 80 soldiers to participate in the Austro-Prussian War. None of the soldiers were killed and 81 came back as they'd made a friend. The country's army was disbanded two years later and has remained neutral ever since. Could you imagine you send an army to war and they actually come back with more men than you sent them with? Liechtenstein is one of those tiny, tiny little countries. Uh, I think it's right on the border of Italy. Let's take a look at the map real quick. Oh no, it's actually on the border of Switzerland and Austria, so it's right in there. So it's close to Italy, but yeah, you can see why they might have gotten involved in Austro-Hungary's wars. And I think that's for the best because they're clearly too powerful. In Strasbourg, in the Holy Roman Empire in the year 1518, many locals began to dance uncontrollably for days yeah. on end until they died. This dancing mania lasted two months and isn't the only recorded instance of this occurring. Thanks for watching this video. I really hope that you- That was cool. I, I like his presentation style. It was interesting. He provided good information. Most of those things I've at least heard of and been aware of at one time or another. So I think I can pretty much verify that they are in fact true. Uh, so, hopefully he's got the outlet. In fact, let's take a look and see what other kind of videos they've got on their channel, just out of curiosity. Uh, the history of pubs, that, that's one we might dive into. The Tower of London, Big Ben. Um, what else we got that might be interesting? Really kind of cool stuff. He did one about the Great Emu War, the history of Halloween, history of Magpie Mine, Warwick Castle, Kenilworth Castle. This is some cool stuff. This is a channel that I could see myself doing some more. Skipton Castle, my family was from there, the Cliffords. Uh, Skipton Castle, that's up in Yorkshire. So let me know your thoughts. Do you see something that uh, he has on his channel that you think would make for a good reaction? Um, if so, let me know, but definitely check him out. Uh, they're currently at 8,540 subscribers. I don't see any reason why with the power of our subscribers on this channel, we can't get this channel over 10,000 in the next 24 hours. So help me out. Head over there and subscribe to Decades. Let's get them over 10,000 subscribers. Thank you in advance. We'll see you again soon.